Geboren wurde Laure Provo in 1978 in Paris-Roubaix in Frankreich. Sie lebt und arbeitet in Antwerpen und London. Die Künstlerin hat gleich zweimal den ersten Preis bei den internationalen Kurzfilmtagen Oberhausen 2010 und 2011 erhalten und 2013 wurde sie mit dem renommierten Turner Prize ausgezeichnet. Sie hat international in bekannten Institutionen ausgestellt, darunter die Tate Britain und die Whitechapel Gallery in London, Porticus in Frankfurt, nicht Frankreich, Porticus in Frankfurt, der Neue Berliner Kunstverein sowie das New Museum in New York. Sie ist eine gefragte Künstlerin, allein dieses Jahr hat sie Ausstellungen in Los Angeles, Peking, Frankfurt, New York, Mailand, Luzern und Dijon. Wir sind daher wirklich sehr glücklich, dass wir Lore gewinnen konnten, hier im Haus der Kunst ein Projekt für die Öffentlichkeit von den Freunden aus der Kunst zu realisieren. And now I shall switch to English, but you knew all that anyway. <laughs> so you didn't say I live in Croatia in the desert. Oh, I, mean, I forgot that. <laughs> okay, correct me with it. Um, so welcome back, Lor. I'm really pleased that you made it back here to do this talk this evening. And perhaps I will just give a quick outline to the audience so they know what's expecting them. Um, so we're going to show uh, some films in full, but they're always around or well, just under 10 minutes. And uh, some films, there are some ex extracts. Uh, and then at the end, we would like to kind of come back to We Would Be Floating Away From The Dirty Past, which is the project uh, Laurel's created for Haus der Kunst. And should we kick off? Do you want to say anything? <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you, Gillian, <laughs> and it's been uh, so nice working with you, and thank you all for coming, and uh, I think we should start with part yeah. one. Where I'll just quickly say, this is it, hit, 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 I used to always say much better, which always sounds the same, hit, hit, hit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've fallen here. So soft. So soft. They welcome you. There. Very gentle wind blowing in your neck. It felt amazing. You were white. Splash. In the middle of the room where we are, just here. For a soup. It smells of that. So maybe just to um, start off with, actually, um, how would you normally show this work? Would it be um, it was screened it or? Um, it is had a few different installations, but okay. um, and the last time I showed it was in uh, Taipei, and I made um, it needs its own sort of room, sort of claustrophobic um, black box. Uh, like you entering inside a flower or something. Yeah. And um, I, I had relics of images of the film hanging around. Uh, the but the first time I made it was for um, was uh, Tate Britain. They did this program called Art Now, and they invited me to do a piece. 
Uh, and it's a, it was a very, very large screen which goes from floor to ceiling, so we really wanted to play with that idea of the image taking the whole space. And sort of emerging the... Yeah, yeah, and then you were placed on a bench, and it's like this idea you always have your bag next to you, and like as if the character of the film starts playing with you, and you're one of them as well. And uh, So it was very sort of playing on that thing and, and, uh, and that loop of... Uh, so it plays as a loop as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was uh, my my initial idea was to uh, make a, a three D film without three D sort of. Uh, how do you create that sort of the images pulling coming at you, you in? Yeah, coming at you and the sound. There's a, a surround version uh, with uh, sound, uh, and also the um, the s the soundtrack was very much like a heartbeat. I wanted. And it's very yeah. loud. It's very punk somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> punk. Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> I thought so. No. Um, but um, no, the reason I'm asking is, of course, because um, what's notable throughout the piece is that mm -hmm. I've known of you and what you, know, what you do is very much that it's important in how you show the work. And it's you know, not just a case of screening something, but it's very much a physical situation as well. Yeah, yeah. I like when the film becomes... Uh, they smelly. I love if someone says, "Oh, your film stinks," or you know, it'd be nice if it gets to that level. Or um, I don't know, but it brings other, not just an image with sound, but uh, sort of creates something else. So I think this was really the image we wanted to escape its own flatness and its uh, so, so sort of competing with life and wanting to be more and uh, interesting though as well because at the very beginning you talk it's it's you're also playing very strongly with sort of filmic conventions mm -hmm. um because right at the beginning you sort of you know you're giving an instruction it's mm -hmm. almost a bit like the credits at the end of a film maybe or something yeah, or yeah. um way but also sort of this um scary situation where you're putting the audience on the spot they can't just sit there and yeah, relax yeah. but mm -hmm. they have to remember what happened yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a sort of a, a trick to keep keep you interested. <laughs> like, listen to me. <laughs> uh, but it's also, yeah, I think it's sort of you become the third character or the second character, or you're, you're I, I would like this sort of sensation. And with text, when you read text, you use your own voice, and so, so it's it sort of implicates you straight away, I guess. And uh, yeah, I think it's very much that that how, uh, yeah, I like to um, sort of force you, but at the same time, it's very much, it's, it's the image know, knows itself. It, she, she's, she can only ask with what, like, I, I mean, it's, it's not as, uh, she's still just pixels, so she can't do much, but she can talk or can try to, to get you. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of work that follows from hit, 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 where it's really about the pixels uh, wanting the attention and how, um, yeah, so, yeah. So there's a lot, and so the, you're communicating on a lot of levels in a way, so you have um, the textual level, so like you say, the viewer has to read mm -hmm. and then to sort of hear their own voice in mm -hmm. a sense, mm -hmm. then you hear your voice. Mm -hmm. um, which you don't uh, identify as such as the artist's voice. It's only if you know who you are, then you kind of realize mm -hmm. it's you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but then, of course, the, the image also speaks on another sort of level. So there's... Mm -hmm. And then the sound, obviously, not just yeah. this, the, the spoken sound, but, this, but the, the, the music, the noise. Mm. Um, yeah, and this, uh, like, for example, when the glass breaks, I don't put a sound, or when it's, uh, like, playing... I think I... So how many uh, you could make this film uh, 60 times just playing a uh, thousand times just, uh, how the sound sort of contradict an image or add to and we'll see with swallow how you sort of yeah sound can really totally change of course mm. the, the yeah swallows the, the next film yeah. but um just to sort of um so your relationship to language. I mean, this is why we wanted to start off yeah. with this film because it's such a uh, well, it's it's a good example. I mean, not uh, not that other films don't also have language; uh, they always do. But um, but I just thought uh, because of you playing with the filmic conventions and kind of giving instructions and speaking and kind of uh, yeah, mixing all these different levels on a very sort of direct level. Mm -hmm. um, or yeah. Um, 
sometimes there's also sort of um, uh, mistakes in there, sort of on purpose, right? Yeah, so there's a lot of m spelling mistakes. And um, at first I sort of didn't realize. <laughs> well, then, of course, it was like, oh, I just spotted like 25 mistakes. In. Um, <laughs> but I think the, uh, I sort of like the idea that I, um, I'm a, uh, um, or the, the filmmaker or, uh, or the person who makes it, uh, can't get it right to start. It's a mistranslation of life. It's a mistranslation of many things. Or so it's a stran it's one translation. But also, uh, when I came to England, I, my my English was uh, pretty bad. And uh, but also how but there's this language that exists, uh, but that is imperfect English. And it's and I quite like that. It's sort of we um, a bit on the edge. So and 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 then you. Because there's a mistake, you almost notice it more. You like you read it really properly because you're like, oh, this is not right. So, it so sort I of also maybe takes away from the authority of film yeah. in a sense, right? Yeah, and being a foreigner and being someone from who, who's an outsider looking at things, I think you're sort of not taken by every details in some way. You become more, yeah, that. Um, View, but yeah, it's all a lot about mis in the work. It's a lot about misinterpreting things and misunderstanding it. And, mis uh, and I think it's something I, even when I speak French, I always felt I was not using the right words or I'm totally inadequate and I can't uh, articulate. So then I'm like, I'm going to be an artist then. <laughs> but it's sort of a how do you, yeah, it's sort of, you, it's, uh, and not hiding that, basically, or playing, saying that. Sort of, maybe sort of showing Yeah, and the then there's so much more imagination. When you, you, you imagine things, uh, many times uh, I got totally wrong that someone was the father or somebody and, and they hate me because it was not right. Or, you know, but how you get things wrong, but then you start to be really, you, you can. So it's a lot, uh, I think with text and these images, it's a lot, you have to make the next image or you have to, um, with my signed pieces as well, you making the image. So I think it's, with yeah. text, it's interesting how you, you are, as the viewer, make an image. Uh, so the signed pieces, we should just maybe explain for those who don't know, they're um, also white text on a black yeah. background, mm. and it mm. often starts with ideally. Yeah, ideally there would be a b big window here and you wouldn't see us two talking with microphones and be in the sun on the, on the beach. So <laughs> well, they're usually shorter. But you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> but this is... <laughs> yeah, well. ideally mm. the light would be lower or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But um, so in terms of uh, also the voice, why do you choose to have your own voice in there? Why not have actors? Um, it's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Very good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and I can try many times and add and stop. And it's mostly that, I think. Um, but also I work very, it's quite organic the way I edit, so I might start with the first minute and then slowly it grows and so it's it would be quite hard. I, I did a few time work with Acta but I find it harder to control, uh, to exp express again it's about articulating yourself what you want and that someone gets it and so it's easier when you're on your own. <laughs> yeah. And sort of Working with language, I mean, is this something that really happened when you moved to the UK, or did you do that before as well? Mm. I think I, I had to do it from the age of <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, I moved to London quite early on, I was, so I didn't... I, I Were did you 19 or something? No. Yeah, 18, yeah. so it was quite... Right. I don't know if I had... Um, not in terms of work, really. I think I had struggled with <laughs> with language, and uh, so I think it's sort of it's a yeah teenage anxiety. But I can't manage these <laughs> words, and so yeah, I don't think I yeah it's really I, and I I guess the clash of uh, culture and sort of triggered that even more. I guess mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we'll come on to this topic again. Anyway, mm -hmm. but so I wonder if we should uh, move on to the next film, perhaps, and then because it'll all get into a big yeah, you'll, dense you'll net. You'll get a bit of sun yourself. Too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so this film is uh, called Swallow.
Butterfly who came by the shoes. They start to carry the shoes up into the air. Hundreds of them taking the shoes off down the river. Down there, till we could not see them. It's so warm here. I think what you really managed to do there is. Um, well, uh, yeah. Then I never quite. Then I'm never quite sure because of this, whether it's the breathing of that or the kind of suggestive imagery that you have, which is sort of like visual porn that's going on there without actually yeah, yeah. being anything. Yeah, yeah. But the same, it just <laughs> go. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's close to suffocation as well. Huh? You know. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I, don't, I think. Uh, but I think this was a project I did um, when I um, was um, given the opportunity to be in, uh, in Italy for almost six months. And uh, I think my idea was to, to go there a bit like a Flemish artist uh, uh, on the Grand Tour, you know, like in the, in the past, what, what is the idea of the Grand Tour and, and sort of the, the cliche of it as a sort of alienating myself from the reality there, you know, just wanting to see what I wanted to see, the sun, the birds, beautiful woman. <laughs> I don't know, just sort of the, the cliches as well of both painter at the time. Um, so I think it was, uh, and then of course, the, this, the cliche of the sensual side of Italy as well, I think, so it was sort of, um, f it's full of cliches in some ways. <laughs> But, but, but uh, in a very non-cliche way, I would say, because yeah. I was going to ask you, because it's mm. you've, you've taken like a classical subject of mm. the, the female bathers or yeah. the women, women mm -hmm. bathing, mm -hmm. which is sort of a yeah, topic in art history. Yeah, I think it, it was I wanted to, to come with that art, art history in some ways, like uh, I'm from that part of the world and I'm coming south, you know, and I, uh, uh, so it was... Um, yeah, and then it was also mm, sort of playing on this idea of a uh, propaganda of images or of emotion. Uh, propaganda, how, how can you create an emotion just with s sound and image, and how can you sort of um, push it? It's like you, it's really close to propaganda. It's the same system almost. Where, uh, sort of to infiltrate someone's yes, mind almost. Yes, yes, and getting your feeling like, oh, suddenly you. Like, I'm not breathing at the same time as the image, am I? It's like, fuck. It's like, <laughs> uh, you know, how can you control, uh, or if you can, and of course, so it's a sort of this idea of pushing the medium to that limit as well. And of course, uh, it's uh, uh, unresolved and, uh, and successful in some ways, because it's... For sure, it's I mean, it gets me anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but you also, you feel like they're so, they're so visceral, these images, mm -hmm. they have the mm -hmm. juice, and mm -hmm. then, but then the way you cut things mm -hmm. as well, they kind of, well, it's almost orgasmic, and then you yeah, have yeah. the obligatory mm -hmm. cigarette at the mm -hmm. end mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. of those yeah, who so smoke. Yeah, the know. cliches again, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it's sort of a... Yeah, I think it's it's really I, I wanted to 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 do that sort of, uh, but it's smell again. This bringing smell or s uh, senses just with an image uh, and yeah. So and uh, like you were saying, inf infiltrating the mind, but then sort of the mind then goes into the body, and then mm. somehow you feel a bit hot, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. And this kind of yeah. It just the it first time I showed it was at, at the White Chapel. Gallery in London, and uh, I was I was praying that it'd be freezing cold outside, and it did. It was snowed, I think, <laughs> and it was so such a big contrast with um, with uh, 
with the well, sunny yeah so region. it was a, a, a nice uh, clash in some ways and yeah sort of the clash of an image as well and then we all sat on a proper chair and this very sensual thing yeah i was gonna say because you've shown this again it's not uh, a screening as such but it's it, well I've, I've only seen images of that yeah. one so it's part of an installation yeah as it well, was no? also part of a uh, like it's a like a key like a diorama or something yes yes it's like a um oh god my words uh, like a almost like a like a paravent or something that yes. kind of enclosed you yes. go inside yeah. and it's a big it's big like a round trom play of a, of a very romantic world so it's a love collage but also again i play with uh, uh, columns and columns are now are ca carrying um, uh, they uh, carrying um, technology like nice, nice uh, yeah. monitors. So it's like this clash of the now and the today. And, and then drawings yeah. as well, like um, well, like you said, like a trompe l'oeil and of, of like nature things that you've drawn onto the this yes. Kind of so, so it was layers of printed things, of uh, of actual videos, of uh, of uh, painted things on it. So it was a lot of collage, and you w were not sure what you you were seeing. So you really had, you really were on, well, you you were creating an, an environment in that sense where you kind of you yeah. went into. And yes, then and when we, we you were, ah, oh, I forgot, I was almost forgetting. <laughs> uh, this morning I, I walked around the museum and I couldn't believe that there was loads of raspberries around. No way. Yeah, so I brought wow. some for you. So you can pass them around. <laughs> I don't know where you keep finding them. That's incredible. Behind the cars, by the car Seriously? park. Seriously? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. At this time of the year as well. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was very unusual. Definitely. Mm. Wow, well, we should maybe market them or something. Haus der Kunst, uh, <laughs> yeah, <maybe>. raspberries. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> New funding. <laughs> Pla pass them along though as well. <laughs> <laughs> they good? Are they yeah. good? Really? Despite the fumes of the cars? Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's we. I was, yeah, and I think also, again, it's, I was uh, thinking of the, um, uh, this idea of cliche and the, this idea of wanting to film what I wanted to film. I never looked, uh, basically, it's motorways everywhere in Italy. It's, it's like, a, this is really totally blinded or one-sided. And even um, I, I thought this idea of filmmaking and this pushing it, um, for example, the whole, the, the scene where the women are uh, ba bathing, uh, they, um, it was just by a motorway. So the sound, just the, the actual soundtrack is like <laughs> 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 So actually so in the like background, it, it, the, you could just hear the car noise. And yeah, it, it looks very serene, but it wasn't a serene. No, and it, the water was freezing. <laughs> I was going to ask you that, actually. It was horrible. Because <laughs> you uh, all look very relaxed. Luckily, I was filming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you <laughs> yeah. It looked very relaxed. Everyone's like hanging out in the rocks and yeah. water. It looks like it's super warm, mm. but it was freezing. Yeah. <laughs> you're so cruel. I can't believe you make <laughs> make people walk through ice cold. What don't you do for art? Huh? Yeah, yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Pick raspberries for a start. But um, so, in a sense, you're you're yeah, you're setting up all this kind of um, fake relationships as well between. Yeah, well, a film, video, film is the, is the essence of it. I guess it's all, uh, especially. Yeah, sound. You even often in the past you would t totally record them separately. Now they often come as one. But yeah. it's very um, yeah. It's the two main medium. I get yeah. movements and <laughs> yeah. So yeah. And in a sense, um, when uh, well, I guess with this piece. I mean, this is why I thought it'd be really interesting to see this one, uh, the swallow, which we just saw, is because um, that's so central. It's like there's. It's all about sensuality. It seems about you know uh, visuality and sensuality and sort of all m intermingles. But the next piece um, is called One T. I wonder, is it okay to move on to that? Be yeah, yeah. Because sure. um, um, this piece One T from 2013 uh, is is much more narrative and um, it sort of shows another side to you. And perhaps we should mention uh, that it was commissioned by Tate for a particular exhibition. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, for uh, Schwitters in Britain. Yeah, Kurt Schwitters. Um, they invited me because they knew my granddad was a friend of him. So they're like, mm, maybe she can make a film. So. <laughs> uh, she's got good connections, our law. <laughs> Would you like some tea? You can see the chair hasn't been used for a long time. There's no one in the house. This is where she keeps the soap she's really. Used to be a little sculpture. So here we're in the living room where my grandfather and my grandmother lived. My granddad was a close friend of K.S. That's a portrait of my grandfather. My granddad's a conceptual artist, you see. Uh, so his thing was to dig a tunnel from his house here. For about 20 years he's been digging a tunnel as his last concept. And the plan was to dig a tunnel all the way to Africa but without the authority to know about it, you know, like, it's really important for him. You know, that's why it's full of earth. It, my grandma kept trying to tidy, but it was impossible. It's been now a few months we've lost him. He hasn't been back. A few months ago, one night, he just didn't come back. Um, where is your granddad now? Well, we don't know. Still. Oh, no way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your grandma, is she all right? Uh, she tried to go into the um, tunnel the other day. No. She tried, she, she, I've been there a few times and it's quite scary, but she, I, I didn't want to go again, so she, you know, the she's fat, she's right? no, yeah. And she's fat and, and she, um, she sort of got stuck at the entrance. So like, luckily the neighbor heard her and she had a broken leg, so now she's in hospital. Jeez. Uh, with our dog Charlie, uh, but um, she's okay. She's oh, thank God for uh, that. I mean, yeah. That's good because she makes quite a lot of work for you as well, doesn't she? Yeah, make? she makes tapestries and cushions, and yeah, and she made the, all the pottery in the video. I talk a bit more about her work uh, in the second part, yeah. and she she makes a lot of um, very nice pottery. Uh, that it's mostly for my granddad because. Some have like bum shape because he likes bums and uh, big bums, right? I yeah, think, yeah. Because <laughs> so yeah. uh, yeah, you have to sort of imagine when you see this piece. When I saw it um, uh, in um, in Derry, London, Derry, actually, oh, wow. where the Turner Prize was uh, unusually shown, not outside of London. It was shown in Lon Derry, London, Derry, in Northern Ireland, and um, mm -hmm. keeps traveling around nowadays. Um, and you come into a dark room. And you see some of the sculptures and, and little collages and paintings and, and there's a big table and that's where all the crockery is and yeah. you can sit down and... Yeah, you sit on the, on sort of the grandparents' table. Um, but I didn't really want to show her pottery if she really forced it. <laughs> I had to show them and show it everywhere. You were but forced to show the pottery? Well, sort of, she really wanted them in the show. So we, but uh, they, they look... Nice, but I like them. I think there's yeah. some great cups there as well. Like, there's some of them that have like a it's very surreal actually. There's some like one with a mouth, like mm -hmm. lips, and yeah. you drink out of the lips, yeah, yeah. And another one that has like um, like stairs going down, mm -hmm. and you drink from the stairs, yeah, yeah. A bit messy, maybe, but <laughs> yes, no, <laughs> but they look really nice. No, very nice, maybe. Very great. <laughs> <laughs> and this project, I mean, um, it was commissioned by Tate, like we said at the beginning, and um. Uh, in collaboration with Grisdale Arts. Mm -hmm. So you worked for a long time, actually. At, it's, uh, well, Grisdale Arts, one should say, is in the UK. It's in the Lake District. Yeah. And in the middle of nowhere, in a sense. Yes. So 
Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they, um, 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 yeah, we we sort of worked uh, a lot. Uh, I think a lot of um, information from uh, Adam. Uh, this idea Adam of Sutherland. Yeah. yeah, the idea of history in general, or how we f we remember history, and how we how do we keep history, or do we save history, how. Uh, or how do we want it to be useful as well? Like the grandma's getting very frustrated with this useless or this cultural thing, and she wants to make it practical. And and mis again, it's about misunderstanding of different voices, maybe or different. But um, yes, yeah, so it's, it's sort of quite. It's it's uh, so w there was a lot of discussion there, and then I then I went to their house and start filming. But uh, it was very much this idea of how do we represent the past, and then the exhibition within was within Kurt Schwitter. So Kurt Schwitter's quite um, his performance are quite raw and quite I don't know. But uh, with history, we sort of have to keep everything you know in the museum. The the uh, idea sort of ordered, the, yeah, and the institution. That's the beginning of his work. That's the end, and that's uh, it's all in this plastic things and how at the same time it's so nice that they become so precious but at the same time they sort of lose some life and uh, or I don't know so this idea of uh, how history is kept and how the granddads are lost in some ways or and so you bring you brought your own <coughs> personal history into it in mm -hmm. a sense yeah but I think it's everybody's it's uh, I mean it's history in the larger sense and but then the grandparents is quite practical because we all have grandparents or gr who are there or not and we can relate, it's sort of personal. But also, also art history, so we've come mm. back again, mm. Swallow, uh, mm. which we saw before that, mm -hmm. where it's sort of, you know, kind of taking a very classical mm -hmm. art historical mm. topic. Yeah. Then there you're, in a sense, you're also making fun of this idea of like, uh, keeping a sculpture as a sculpture in a museum, and mm. uh, but rather it becomes a, a useful object. It can yeah. be a bin, yeah. <laughs> for example. Yeah, I think it's it but again. It's it's a sort of how yeah. Or is it the painting of we have too many? Let's use it as a tray, and it it's how it's it's making it less precious in some ways. And I think sometimes it's. it's Gets too precious, uh, art to some level. We, but uh, at this, it's a fine balance because we need to keep history. And but it was really quite disgusting. This I think mm -hmm. in, in that and the institution, especially that Tate Britain was like quite formal and. And Tate and is, of course, one of the institutions there yeah, is as a museum. Sort yeah, of thing. like, oh, there's a bit of moss on this. We need to spray it like 25 million times. And so it's, it, you need to, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's already a place where things can happen and you can try ideas. And, but it's, uh, so it was very, I think I, I was very conscious of that side when I was invited. And well, maybe also in sort of connection to that idea of legacy, because of mm -hmm. course the whole show that which for which you were invited to do this new s commission, this mm -hmm. new piece, um, well, through your granddad, but mm -hmm. the fact that he was a you know good friend of Kurt Schwitters, and mm -hmm. Kurt Schwitters, of course, being uh, yeah an artist that has a legacy, and you yeah, kind sure. of follow that, and then how does Tate Britain Tate as the institution kind of deal with legacies and art yeah. history, and then so you kind of. Yeah, I guess it's... Brought uh, these ideas in, I guess. Yeah, I felt it had to be... And, and my granddad's sort of the frustrated artist who's not very recognised and so still needs to dig his tunnel. And, um, and I, so it's, it's... Yeah, it's about hierarchy as well. And, and the grandma's always a bit on the side because she does much more pottery and, but she wants to, to be um, as well recognised and... Uh, so it's also about gender in some ways, and uh, but uh, also just yeah, just uh, they do funny things there, so I had to film it. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Mm. Mm. Um, well, maybe um, there's a short film. I think we should include it. It's only three minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's called Monitor to Vegetables. Sorry, Franz, you are really having to run around with these lights today. I'm very apologize. I really apologize. And that's from 2010. These are the um, these were, these are the vegetables that fell from the sky the other day. 
in, in my bedroom, I was just sleeping and suddenly I woke up and there was four vegetables, it was one, the lemon, the onion, tomato and the carrot, they were all there in front of me on my bed. I was sleeping really well, like, you know, like every night I was like, uh, you know, and I woke up, this was there, I couldn't believe it. I thought, what, what is it? How can this vegetable be there, be there on my bed? And um, I realized that they, I looked up, I looked at the ceiling just uh, above my bed, and there was four perfect shapes. A sign of God for what? Uh, for my granddad to come back. Oh, okay. But it didn't quite work. You said he's not here, you know? Well, it was before he came back. Sometime he came back. Mm. Oh, yeah. all right. That's why you know he's all right, right? Because yes. he's like, okay. Mm. <laughs> uh, but I th yeah, this is uh, this idea of... Um, uh, I think for, for a small week, I said, I'm going to do a video a day. <laughs> but I did like three. <laughs> and then that was it. <laughs> but this idea of a uh, quick uh, uh, sort of playing with, I think I really, this idea of release is, keeps coming back even in one tea. You know, it's a proof I win the house, you've got a teapot, the chairs. You know, it's sort of this idea, I think the idea of release and the magical, the, the miracles becoming real. and and religion, of course, and I think um, art and religion are close. And uh, uh, so I, I p um, this was playing very much on the proof of something, proof that it exists. It's not just an image, it's here in the room with you. Yeah, which in a sense, if you're mm. in the installation with uh, one tea and you have mm. the actual pots that you mm. see in the film, it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. there's a direct relationship you can, you've you know, even though you're watching it, but the sit the sit setting of it mm -hmm. makes you want to feel like I'm sitting in that film right now. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of yeah. You're the audience. You're you're the characters as well. You're the friends of the family. Or exactly. yeah, and I think uh, so. This was a very small little thing. Mm -hmm. um, not very nice to priests, but, <laughs> <laughs> but religion actually <laughs> um, sort of turns up in um, in the last film, which. I think it might be nice just to go straight on to that because then I think at the end we'll talk about um, the installation that you're doing here mm -hmm. and then can move into questions from the audience yes. as well. Um, so uh, we thought we'd show you if it was, which is downstairs in the middle hall. If it was my museum, we would welcome you personally. I would have asked everyone from the museum to come out all running out of their office, smiling. Dancing and singing. Welcome, welcome. Kiss you, everyone. Did you know what we do here at night for you? We get everyone who works in the museum to come at night and kiss the floor everywhere. All the people who work here, you know. If you come on Saturday, it's just fresh. You've just been kissed all night long. Because a lot of people don't know that these things happen. And I know the person in the front desk really likes you, he, he told me. He would have quite liked to kiss you, so if you go back, maybe... We could improve it a lot, you know. They don't know what to do with it. In my museum, you'll be asked to touch everything, and even lick things. You know, as you watch artwork, someone will come behind you and massage your back. Often we massage the walls as well. Column, especially we need a big massage, you know, we're carrying so much. If I knew you were coming normally, there's always someone here singing, like beautiful woman singing gospel to everyone. If I knew it was you coming, it's, she's usually there every day singing. And with the echo, it's so wonderful, you know. It's a shame she didn't come today. We know you don't go to church anymore. You come here on Sunday instead. We will fulfill you. If it was my museum, we'd all for you raspberry. Like you're walking around the bushes and up. Oh, oh, there's a raspberry. If it was my museum, I would make every angle a lot softer, you know. See, there's some corners which just soften a little bit. I, I did it when no one was looking. 
I would have asked grandma to redecorate the room. A pink pose, like a huge pose on top of the column. Maybe we should start with the process of it because I think um, it's kind of a particular invitation to invite an artist to do something with the middle hall of Haus der mm -hmm. Kunst because mm -hmm. it's not the most inviting space in some ways because mm -hmm. it's uh, very dominate, well, the architecture is very dominant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, uh, it's, uh, it's impressive. So you're like, ooh, I feel so little here. But it's, uh, yeah, I think the, uh, I don't know how, I think we had so many ideas of what we could do. Huh? I, I did like 60 drawings and every day, oh, we could do this. And at the end, I tried to put it all in the film. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, we could repaint everything. Uh, make soft angles and it was very uh, I think I think I, f I felt it because it's of uh, this central hall I felt like we had to be uh, this introduction of art it's almost like quite a sort of a um, sort of how now this demand of uh, entertainment and audiences for museums so uh, sort of also again miss getting the point of it where a museum is and trying to be uh, what people want, or how, how, and for my granddad, we're making him a visit center, so we're making a karaoke room and many things that people may want to use. And so I felt here was a bit, I could uh, play with that a little bit. Of uh, again, uh, we in. I think the character in the video is maybe it's the cleaners or the assistant of what could be done to be, uh, and so it's always from one point of view as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess it's uh, yeah the, the the when you, yeah it's quite uh, overwhelming and the whole history of course of the building you're like ooh <laughs> uh, what should I show like what can I show and um, so but I, th I feel like um, you've really kind of um, not just got to grips with House to Kunst and its history and mm -hmm. without even sort of being very overt about it it's mm -hmm. just you're you're just sort of referring up to it in an oblique kind of way, mm -hmm. kind of pulling up the carpet, pulling up the floor, mm -hmm. pulling up the tiles, mm -hmm. what's underneath there, you know, mm -hmm. this idea of what do you hide under a carpet, what's yeah. what's going on there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time you've you've got you've made comments sort of for museums in general, sort of, mm -hmm. you know, really kind of picking up on the figure of a uh, very important figure of the invigilator mm -hmm. picking up on the on the staff on people who, who clean the museum mm -hmm. um, then also you know then you really kind of revealed this thing that we kiss the floor every night yeah. which is people you know it's a bit embarrassing that everyone knows about it now <laughs> but but I think it's you know but you've really got to grips with kind of what um, yeah, to what is a museum and, and and also maybe the secret wish wish for uh, of an audience or oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could just touch everything and lick everything mm. and maybe paint myself. Yeah, yeah it's a sort of very basic thing. But as a child, you I always told off not to touch or not to. So it's really, um, uh, it's very mature film, really. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I think um, you know you uh, said at one point. Um, the museum is the new church, or something. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that you go mm -hmm. to the museum on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, religion comes a lot in the in the work. I, I grew up with strong religion, uh, religious upbringing, and I think it's sort of a. It, yeah, I go there on Sunday. I know, and I, I think it's. Um, it's still a place for reflection. So it's a place where you can step away from your routine and your, so it's sort of, I, I do, uh, yeah, it's sort of taking a bit. Um, that sort of role. That, that, that role, I think. Uh, so it's. Uh, sort of maybe a, a kind of oasis as well, like you yeah. were saying, maybe in the middle yeah. of House of Kunst, it could be yeah, an oasis. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I think, yeah, they, there's, yeah, we had so many ideas of what to do with the, the before of turning it just into massive oasis and then, oh no, let's pull the floor and let's make it look like hell. And, and so it was very... Uh, yeah, the choice was between heaven and hell. Yeah, the end we went for hell. It was really hard to make that project. <laughs> and my assistant would get covered if I had a massive allergy of some of, oh, of the, the dust. Paint. Yeah, yeah, the dust and yeah, sort of everything. 
Um, but what I like about yeah. it is because um, you're you, yeah, you made the project and it's very connected to Haus der Kunst or museums in general, mm -hmm. but what you've also have these, these metal men st or stick, mm -hmm. stick figures mm -hmm. um, and they talk to the audience and they have this sort of immediate mm -hmm. conversation with them, greeting them, yeah. saying welcome. Yeah, yeah they, they, um, why did I make them? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think the, having the figure of the, the cleaner, and the, we, we have to clean our history or clean our past or understand it at least or how um, to be able to move forward as well. And so I think first it was really the cleaners and then it would be nice to have some inside the tent as well chatting how they just smoke and they'll disappear. They all, it's all very, they're all very self-conscious. The, the object in general, they kept saying, oh, I know I will turn into smoke. I know you'll put me in storage very soon. And yeah, so they, they feel a bit, this, these objects, we feel really um, redundant or something. Or they, they, they want to exist more than they are, sort of. Um, so so they, they became, I think they, yeah, and it's very, practical way to interact, I guess, to, to, yeah. But it's sort of a nice mix in the sense that you come in and you have this person who's saying welcome to you and, mm -hmm. and then you have this other voice who's saying, oh, they thought we, I should give you flowers, but I thought it was a bit over the top. And, mm -hmm. But if you, you know, there's a woman back there, she, she'll have a cup of tea ready for you if you want it, just mm -hmm. say the word. Mm -hmm. Two people actually have asked for this cup of tea um, <laughs> so far. Um, and so, so you have that level of kind of being directly addressed, but by this actually inanimate object mm. and then you kind of have and then you have this this ridiculously crazy thing of in, like wow what happened to the floor mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's yes it's a fiction but mm. you see a lot of people coming in kind of I'm not sure what I'm seeing here and then mm. they kind of mm. take photographs of the floor and it's sort of so you have this sort of other level somehow mm. and then it's a sculpture but it's a it's an environment which mm. you can then enter mm -hmm. And then you're on the carpet, and then you have the film. So mm -hmm. it sort of seems to address uh, the viewer in so many different ways. Yeah, I think a lot of the installation. Uh, I also like showing the videos just as videos sometimes. But I, when I have the opportunity to have a space, and I, uh, I, uh, yeah, again, you become an actor. You become you're becoming more part of it in some ways, and you have to move your body in it and interact with that monitor in front of you or you feel a bit little and they start talking at you like don't you know <laughs> you know <laughs> like, like, uh, so in a sense yeah. so from seeing the other films it's mm -hmm. sort of um, for me it's like quite a development and mm -hmm. in a sense because you have you have the textual level you have the speaking level but there's very direct being directed mm -hmm. very you're kind of spoken to as mm -hmm. a visitor mm -hmm. um, then you have this quite central feel to it as well because you sort of you're underneath the floor and mm. it's a bit dirty and a bit mm. funny mm. and then you have this sort of a narrative though as well so in a sense it all comes I feel like there's lots of strands that in your work overall that kind of mm. somehow collate yeah. into this work yeah and, uh, the carpet was first time <laughs> the carpet yeah uh, which is inside the tent yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I think it's uh, this idea of uh, yeah the uh, the object being present is, is sort of coming back again. I think it's one of my hardest pieces in terms of physically. It's like, mm, <laughs> what's <is> that? <laughs> but it has. Um, but in yeah. a way, it's again the same thing of like you know, like with the pots, like so the fiction in the film becomes reality, sort mm -hmm. of thing. Is why you've mm. you've now made. It. Yeah, and I've even made some little corners. That you just Which I discovered only recently. recently. Yes, it was. Uh, <laughs> he made some corners softer. <laughs> <laughs> Not asking anyone because we no. didn't have the permission. I <laughs> but I was amazed that the cleaners haven't put it away yet. So yeah. I don't think they've discovered it yet either, actually. It's <laughs> <laughs> at all. We'll wrap it up here. And so, Lowell, thanks again once more. Really fantastic to have you here. And thank you so much for your wonderful work. I, th I know a lot of people have enjoyed it, and I certainly have. And uh, so I can only. Thank you. Yeah, thank, very you much. thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you.